Hi, my name is Felicia Gath. I'm one of the district ed tech facilitators and I support uh, schools in the north region of the district. Today we are going to talk about keeping our students engaged in the virtual classroom. Uh, one of the most difficult things to do is to maintain the focus and engagement of students when we're thinking about having uh, distance learning. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to share with you all some tools that will support you in keeping your students engaged. One thing that we want to make sure of is that our students look at going to school and uh, coming to school, even if it's virtually, that it is six hours full of engagement, excitement, and full of interactions between the students and the teachers and the students and themselves. Uh, a child was asked one time, what does school mean to them? And the student's response was, uh, six cruel hours of our lives. And so that's a lot, um, that's a harsh statement to say because our children spend majority of their time at school or in a classroom setting. So we definitely don't want them to spend six hours of cruelty for the number of years that they have to go to school. We wanna make sure that we are giving them six cool hours of their life. So we, uh, in order to do that, we have to be very strategic in how we incorporate engagement into our lessons. So let's go to Jamboard. Jamboard is one of our Google apps that you can find on the app launcher or the waffle as we call it. And you can find lots of ways to engage students um, using Jamboard. So let's see an example of that. So the example that you're about to see is a four corner activity. And what they're doing is, is just asking a question of how do you feel today? And the students would select the picture that most relates to how they are feeling. And then they would add a sticky note to the board. They would type in how they feel, save it, cancel, and they can move it to uh, which dog represents how they actually feel. And so even if you look at the uh, different sticky notes, you can also ask them to add their uh, name on there so that you can see each student's response in case there is something that you may need to address outside of the lesson. So that's just one simple example of um, how to use Jamboard. There are so many other ways to use Jamboard within your lessons. Another tool that you have access to is um, Google Slides. So with Google Slides, you have the opportunity to make your slides engaging for your students. So I would go to the snowball toss game. And on here, we are breaking our students up into groups based on color names. And the objective is for the students to color in the snowballs. And the team that colors the most snowballs will be the winner. So it, it kind of um, supports a little uh, competition or friendly competition here. And so all the students would have to do once the timer has started is click on a snowball and fill it in with the paint. If I'm the red group, let's say I'm the blue group, I'll fill it in with blue. And then I will go to each individual snowball, not clusters of snowballs in order to fill it in to see which team would win. So that's just another kind of brain break activity that you can use to keep your students uh, motivated as well as energized in the lesson. Some of the things that we want to make sure that we consider when we are 
um, thinking about engagement strategies is making sure that they are appropriate for the learning goal, making sure that the activity is not just about having fun, but it's also about being engaged and learning a particular skill or content. So one of the things that helps with this is the teacher's um, level of enthusiasm. How are you presenting this information? Are you showing excitement? Are you um, fun and energetic or are you sounding like a robot while you are talking and it is just slow and boring and putting children to sleep and especially if students are at home they're already in a very comfortable environment possibly still in their uh, pajamas so we want to make sure that we have the excitement and the energy that is necessary to keep our students involved in learning. Um, making sure that the content that we select is relevant to the tools that we're using, that the organization of the lesson does not leave uh, gaps between learning where there's idle time where you lose the attention of the students, um, that there are varying levels of difficulty with the activity so that you are reaching all of your different um, learning styles as well as your um, instructional levels within uh, your classroom that uh, active involvement of the students are uh, is required it is not an option and so you make sure that you are calling on students when you see that someone is kind of sitting in the background uh, making sure that you have a variety of activities so that they're not getting bored with doing the same activity over and over again because it's just the one that you are comfortable with um, but one important thing is the factor of building a rapport, especially if your students are not in person, face to face with you. You have to figure out ways to connect with your students and to be able to have effective communication with your students as well as the students with their classmates. So that way that they feel like it is a community or a family versus just some strangers that they come on the computer to talk with every day. And then also make sure that you're using appropriate conc uh, concrete and understandable examples, making sure that you are practicing with the students with the activities to show them how to participate in activities prior to putting them into instruction. So like the old quote goes, tell me I forget, show me I remember, but involve me and I'll understand. Here's another um, Google slide activity where the students can go in and create a gift for a particular vocabulary word. And so we know that the students really enjoy uh, sending out gifts. So this is a way to make it more instructional. So I would say what the teacher has done here is with the URL at the very end, she put the word copy. So that way it forces each student to make their own individual copies. That way uh, each student will be able to turn something in and it's not a collaborative activity or you can make it collaborative and so on here the students will uh, make their own gifts using gift pal uh, for their vocabulary words and so here you see that this student has identified the word the definition and explained the gift that they selected for the word determined So that's just another way that we know that our students would enjoy being able to complete that activity. Because we know that in this uh, social media day and age that gifts are very, very popular. Now Nearpod has so much information and so many opportunities to engage your students. We're not going to go that deep into it, but know that Nearpod is an option. And the reason Nearpod is an option is because it provides a variety of content and activities. So we have 
uh, Nearpod content, which are features that allow you to push rich media content out to your students through your lesson. So if you wanted to have maybe a news article or a video of a recording of a um, historical event, uh, you can use the content portion. Uh, you can even go in and do like a virtual field trip with it. Or you can go in and do activities. And so these activities allow your students to collect, uh, to provide responses that will be reflected in the lesson. Um, and that also will show that they have attained the information that you presented in that lesson. Uh, one of the more popular activities is the time to climb, which encourages a more friendly competition where the students would answer questions, but the objective is to answer the questions as quickly as possible because maybe everyone is getting the question correct, but the one who answers the most question, uh, answers the questions the quickest will have the higher score at the end of the game. Uh, Nearpod is great because you can launch your lessons um, live where you have total control of the pace of the lesson, or you can do student pace. Let's say that there are a few students that are behind or came to class late that particular day, you can give them the student pace lesson and so they can uh, complete the activities at their own pace. This is just an example of the main screen for Nearpod. Again, like I said, I'm, we can't go too deep into it because Nearpod will take up so much time in order to explain it, but know that it is a resource and that we will provide additional videos um, of Nearpod activities to help you create your Nearpod lessons. You also have the option of virtual uh, station rotation. So here, the teacher has identified on a Google slide which workstations are available and how the students can rotate between those uh, particular sessions. So if I uh oh excuse me if I click on the uh, board then I will be taken to a Google slide to help complete that particular activity. So we have the option to um, go to a Google slide. Again, uh, the teacher has forced the students to make their individual copies of this particular um, virtual station rotation. And so once we get here, uh, we have activities and things embedded into the uh, slide so that they can go to the actual slide that they need to go to in order to complete a particular assignment. So this is the teacher-led station. They can You can provide the objective, the standards, the I can statement, and then you can identify the items that need to be brought to the teacher table uh, in order to complete whatever activities you have planned. You can also insert a video call uh, and a link that where you are kind of giving the student the directions for that particular activity for those students who are who have a hard time with reading as well. So that's just an example of a virtual workstation. And so we also have a digital choice board. And so with a digital choice board, uh, students are able to select which activities that they want to complete. Um, you can create these in many different ways. Like I said, on here, this is Miss Bush STEAM class, and so they have different things that they can complete throughout the week for this uh, choice board, which will keep the students engaged and there are more than enough activities on here to make sure that the students um, have something to do and each activity is 
an uh, interactive activity where the students must be engaged uh, in order to complete the, um, the lesson. So let's look at a, a template of another choice board. So here you have options of different templates to choose from. We'll choose choice board number one. Again, forced to make a copy. And this one is a tic-tac-toe board where the students have to start on the center square and there's a star there and the directions let the students know to start with number five and then make two other choices to make your tic-tac-toe game. And so that way uh, they have different activities that they would have to do in order to complete this board. And the, the objective is to do your across, top to bottom or diagonal, um, three in a row X's or circles uh, in order to complete that particular uh, choice menu. Screen recording tools. Uh, we have a video that shows you how to use uh, one of our screencasting tools, which is Loom, uh, and which basically teachers are able to uh, present a lesson to students, especially if a student is not going to be there, or it could be a tutorial to show students, um, provide students with some additional support on how to solve a problem or how to practice particular skills. And so, Two of the more popular uh, tools for screencasting are um, Screencastify and Loom. And so you would have to determine um, which one works best based on the information that you're providing. With Screencastify, you have a five minute time limit. With Loom, there is unlimited time. Uh, and actually this video that I'm doing right now is a Loom video. And so it kind of gives me the opportunity to show my presentation as well as to do uh, the voice over in order to give directions on or to explain my presentation. So that just gives you kind of some additional things um, to identify and like I say again here, is uh, an example of screencasting. And we have Miss Angelica. Today's workstation, we will be focusing on rainbows. Who remembers us talking about the weather? We talked about the different forms of weather, uh, hurricanes, tornadoes, rainstorms, even the big tsunamis. Do you remember we talked about the big tsunamis? And so you can actually show your face or how I have mine. I have my um, Bitmoji face on at this uh, point in time for this presentation. I'm going to move my head over here. You can also incorporate um, Flipgrid. And so... Um, Flipgrid is something that some of you all are very familiar with, where you can pose a question to your students and they can record their answers and they can see themselves, they can practice reading, um, they, can, um, they can respond to another student's response. So Flipgrid is another very useful tool. We also have a way to create an interactive video within Nearpod, which is one of the content uh, activities. And so you would be able to use that uh, to also incorporate a video for your students. So here we're going to look at an example of a Flipgrid video. And so this video is a would you rather video 
where you would uh, choose an option from the emoji list below, make your choice and defend it. Would you rather find a unicorn or find a genie, be a dancer or a singer or eat donuts or watermelon? And so right here to add your response, you would click on add response. And so your camera will come up and it will show you exactly how to, I'm sorry, my hair looks a little mess, but that's okay. Uh, it will show you how to create that particular video to respond to one of those uh, responses. And so those are several tools that you can use that will keep your students engaged in a virtual classroom. We will share additional opportunities or additional options, or we will actually narrow down one particular option and give you more information on how to use that particular tool. So I hope this video was helpful, um, and we will hopefully see you soon in future videos. Thank you.